to me, it's like the only way. And I think when people get into business, they kind of have like a plan B. Like if it doesn't work out, I could always, you know, I have my degree so I could go right. get a job over here. Or, oh, I could go work for my mom or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. To me, when I start a business, I make sure that I have no backup plan. Because if I don't have a backup plan, I know it's going to succeed. Because yeah. I have no choice. You don't have an option. Especially yeah. now. I have a wife and two kids, right? So Shit changes. It has to work, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think too many people have a plan B, something to fall back on. So in the times of adversity, they could just revert to that. Um, if you really believe in something and are passionate about a business, I wouldn't have any backup plan. And I would make sure you just go all in. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Tranquilo podcast. We're here with Fui uh, with Courtside. Appreciate you for hosting us here. This place is sick. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys uh, having me on here. I'm a fan of what you guys are doing here in the community, in the community, in the podcast you guys are hosting. So thank you. Um, pleasure to be on here with you. Yeah, no, 100%. It's a, it's a dope spot. I, I mean, I born and raised in the Westchester area, went cool. to Columbus High School. I had no idea that this was even back here. Right. Uh, so how long have you been in this space? I'll be honest. I had no idea this was here yet. <laughs> um, this was, um, it's been about six years. So the way it started, I, I used to be a basketball a skills trainer. So okay. I, I would work with the youth and the kids. I had basketball camps, a basketball academy, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one training, small group training, things like that. Uh, so when I, I started my business, I was looking for a place um, to go indoors, obviously, you know, right. in Miami with the heat and uh, the rain that comes up exactly. out of nowhere, sneaks up on you. It's kind of hard to have a business solely outdoors. So, you know, I grinded and put some time into just, you know, the outdoor stuff in a park. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, when my business grew and, and I was looking for an indoor spot, um, a, a buddy of mine's dad told me about this place. This gym, I think, is like ancient. I think it's, it's been around since like... I don't know how, how far back. Yeah. Supposedly, the story is um, that they used to run high school games in here. Okay. I don't know how. It's not regulation size court. <laughs> um, but when I came here, you know, one day I just showed up. Somebody had told me, you know, up the stairs in the back of Brave Church, there's a basketball court. So I just knocked on the door, um, spoke to the people. They've welcomed me here since day one. So I'm very fortunate to be a, a part of Brave mm -hmm. Church. They've been awesome with me. Um, but when I first came here, it was like, um, a place where they would do their youth group. So Wednesday nights, the kids would come and play. And then okay. they had a stage. It was like a, a mess. Organized chaos is what they had here. <laughs> but just, just a spot for, the, for the, the youth in the church to be able to come and, and play basketball and dodgeball and all types of stuff. So when I came here and started renting, uh, little by little, I renovated the place, you know, the flooring, the baskets, um, you know, the banner, everything you see here, the lighting, like pretty much everything had to be redone. And uh, little by little, year by year, we now have uh, what you see here, which has been a staple in the basketball community and just like one of those uh, legendary courts that are different from all other courts, but mm -hmm. just has its own uh, unique uh, feel yeah. and people love it. So I I'm proud to have been here for six years and 
it makes it you know a little bit cooler when you built it from from the ground up 100 so. percent. that's the most uh rewarding thing for you, sure like and that, and that feeling of being able to like hey this was nothing and i turned it into this is yes. uh, is a really rewarding feeling correct the the backdrop that you have back here so can you talk a little bit about that and it kind of comes out in the shot but i mean you got tom brady on there you got masvidal on there khaled and a bunch jimmy and yeah. a bunch of heads so um I mean, so when I transitioned, so mm -hmm. in 2020 and COVID, um, you know, everything was shut down. Uh, it was very hard to work with kids, you know, True. in terms of, you know, summer camps and trainings. Mm -hmm. And with the adults, it was a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, it was more Flexible. lenient, right? Yeah. So that's when I had the idea of, you know, because this is my livelihood, my business. I've been an entrepreneur since day one, never really had a, a job, a mm -hmm. nine to five. Like, this is just in my blood. So. Um, when I transitioned to, to this idea of courtside and adult basketball league in 2020, uh, that's when the gym started to kind of uh, take form and we added the scoreboard and the wall mm -hmm. and, and all that. So when we started, that wall was just kind of blank. Gotcha. Um, the name of our league is obviously courtside mm -hmm. basketball league. So me with a good friend of mine, uh, Mandy Prieto, shout yeah. out to him. He does, you know, a lot of our printing and, and uniforms and all that type of stuff. Um, so it was me and him where we were kind of talking like, you know, we got to put something cool on that wall. Mm -hmm. um, and then he had the idea of like, this is courtside. So why don't we put celebrities sitting courtside, uh, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. So that's where you see these guys. Now, there's kind of this is, I think, our second banner there where we've changed up the celebrities. Mm -hmm. So the idea this time you see uh, Tyreek Hill, which is played at courtside, mm -hmm. Nikki Jam, which is played at courtside. Jimmy Butler actually came to watch a year ago. So he was in the stands. Uh, Jorge Masvidal came to watch about a year ago. Um, Osuna's played here a ton. Who That's else crazy. do we got here? <laughs> um, and then we added some. Some uh, is Osuna. Can he, like, does he play ball well? Yeah, Osuna's yeah. actually really good. Um, super skilled, uh, fiery, competitive. Mm -hmm. um, but he could play. Nicky Jam, you know, is in his 40s, okay. but he just picked up basketball like gotcha. recently. But plays every single day mm -hmm. for for the last couple years. So. Nice. Um, so he's not as advanced, but, um, but Osuna could ball. Like, I don't, I'm not sure if he played like in the high school level or, or right. whatnot, but, but right. he, he's, he's, he's a got real the skill set. Yeah. He's got the skill set for sure. That's dope. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, so you came, so you come, come up with this adult league essentially because of COVID basically, right. right. Kind of built that model. So let's actually get into a little bit about what courtside is and, uh, yeah, how it's kind of evolved into this adult league, essentially. Man, so courtside, so I grew up, I'm 33 years old now. From as long as I can remember, I've been playing basketball. Like, it's the only sport I've ever played, right? Uh, born and raised in Miami, been in the basketball community in, in Miami mm -hmm. forever, right? Uh, I've played in adult basketball leagues growing up since I think junior, le uh, junior year of high school. Like, at 17, I played in all the local leagues. Okay. Um, the day and age that we're at now with uh with the internet and with social media and all that is able to to that's how we're able to to provide the services that we do mm -hmm. um but even back then it was kind of like a situation where you go play your game you get up some buddies you put, form a team go play your game and right. then you leave right mm -hmm. um which was cool because you're able to play after high school or after college ball you still could play competitively exactly. like mm -hmm. in an organized league with a ref and all that yeah my idea especially when I really started to think about what I could do in 2020 was like, why don't we create a situation where it's like, you almost feel like a college NBA player, like a pro, mm -hmm. but just like in a rec league, you know, there's so many guys, not only in Miami, around the world, like it's so hard to play college basketball. I think it's like 1% of mm -hmm. all high school basketball players. And then right. even then, like there's good players. Like you went to Columbus. Mm -hmm. How many kids are there in Columbus? Like at the varsity level, there's 10 players on a team, maybe six or seven that are really playing. Right. It's an all boys school, huge school. This is just an example. But in Columbus, for instance, there's so many guys there that could play that are good basketball mm -hmm. players, but there's limited spots. So the idea was like, if we could get all these guys that have a passion for the game, because basketball is fun as hell. Yeah. Great workout. It's competitive too. Competitive, but like stress reliever, mm -hmm. like an escape exactly. from the mm -hmm. from the real world, especially at the time of 2020, you know? Um, so the idea was if we could give like that feel where like you're, uh, you're noticed, there's highlight videos. We provide player rankings. 
Um, all our games are live streamed on YouTube. So um, you play, it's live streamed, and then it gets posted. So you could go back two years ago and watch a game that you played, you know, with, with your buddies. Mm -hmm. So like just providing all that extra attention and like the content um, was really like my idea and really what we've been able to uh, to execute. But that, that's really where it started because I play college basketball. Right. And I'm like, man, not everybody got like that feel and attention. Mm -hmm. Like if we could provide that for just an average Joe, um, we really have something. Yeah. I, you created something where people feel, like you said, that they're in something bigger than just a pickup game on the court. Right? Correct. You're going here. You're, you're, you're creating per, uh, player rankings. You're creating kind of like something that people look forward to because like you said, you grew up playing basketball your whole life. You don't really lose that, right? Like I, I, played, I played baseball and football my whole life. And when it kind of got taken away from me, you almost like lose a little bit of that identity, right? Yeah. Because like you're, you're so, that's, that's all you know. Like I remember going into college and just being like, all right, I'm done playing ball. Like now what, what do I do with my life, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll get into the strength and conditioning world because like that's what I like, player, you know, player development and shit like that. But reality is I was still looking for that, right? Then I started coaching like a little league baseball team because I had a younger brother at the time that was playing baseball. And like, that was my way of like staying involved and then going and playing and just throwing in the, at the park with one of my boys, like, because you just, you build such a relationship with the game. So now here you have people that they, whether you played even high school college ball, like that's what you did when you were a kid. You went to the park and you go, you go play with your boys, right? right? So here now, all of a sudden, you have like a space where you can come with your boys and, and play competitively, which is sick. Yeah, man. I, I think mental health is like a huge uh, issue, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. I think it, it's, it's more like, you know, popular and more out in the open. Right. And, and we all understand how important it is. Um, even for me, like I play in the league as well, like knowing like you have a game uh, one, one day out of the week, right? You get to come here. It's an escape completely because mm -hmm. you know as an athlete like when you're in the game you can't be really thinking about anything else right. any problems regarding finances or relationships like you're just focused on that game yep. and being able to just focus on the game and on the moment like when that game's over especially after like sweating so that physical workout mm -hmm. as well like it's almost like uh, a reset like you just feel refreshed you yeah. feel happier and then not only the game but leading up to the game, you know, the group chat with your boys exactly. and being able to reconnect or going to Flannies after and mm -hmm. having a beer. And then the next day getting the stats and going on the YouTube and 100%. watching, like, it's just a disconnect from everything that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, going on. And, and, you know, life could be tough at, at times as an adult, you know, as a kid, you just worry about the game and school. But yeah. as an adult, so many of these guys have so many responsibilities and things yeah. going on that the escape of like having courtside, having a community, that they could come and play and get excited for the next game. And, and it's just kind of like a, a hobby, but like an escape, you know, like where when you just go play at the park, you play, you leave, it's great. Right. But this is like so much more. It's the buildup and then mm -hmm. the after effects of the game. Um, that to me is like the most rewarding part. And then also there's been a ton of guys, man, that were just, they came in the league out of shape, you know, especially in 2020, you're home all day, yeah. you know, eating and, and, and depressed in a way. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you come here and you're not only getting in shape in the, in the one hour game a week or some guys are on two or three teams, but it's not only in those one to three hours. It's the motivation of like, I want to go to the gym because I want to be exactly. better in the league. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've seen so many guys just be out of shape and drop 20, 30, 40 pounds. And That's just incredible. like they're just back into it. Or even guys that that were in somewhat shape, like they just got that love for the game back where they're like, shit, I got a league. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm playing high school again. And. and so we've been able to build a community over these years and just it, it's really impacting people's lives for real. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. The, the mental health thing is a big thing. You know, it's something that people, like you said, are becoming more aware of. And just like you have to take care of your physical health, you got to take care of the mental side of your health. Correct. And it takes work. You know, it takes time that you put in. And, you know, everyone, I think, has their own way of doing it. And I do think sports and, you know, just being around a community is a great way to do it. It's something, like you said, you're working all day. You want something to disconnect, right? Yeah. And, like, and this is where you, you've kind of created that space, which is dope. For sure, man. Yeah, um, man, that's huge. The, the next thing that I wanted to ask you, right? So I want to join courtside, let's say. Like, how does that process work for someone that wants to join the league? Yeah, so um, the biggest platform, like, the platform that we use the most is Instagram. Okay. Um, you know, we're on TikTok. 
TikTok. Obviously, we're on YouTube. We mm -hmm. have a podcast of our own. Um, and then we have our website. Um, we post like a lot of, um, you know, announcements and what's going on in the league through Instagram and now with our podcast that's fairly new, mm -hmm. but it's simple. Like you just go on the website and you can register when the registration is open. Gotcha. Now with courtside, um, there's no like restrictions in terms of like, you bring your own team, right? right? So it's not like you sign up and then you're like in a draft type okay. thing where we might pair you up with a dude that uh, lives in Kendall that you've never met before, mm -hmm. right? Like, so, and that's what's cool about it. Like you bring your boys, mm -hmm. right? You bring your friends, you bring, uh, people from work you bring all the time. So it's like kind of like a networking type thing where right. it's like, all right, all my bros from the bank come and play, you know, things like that. So um, you go on, you register, you know, obviously there's a fee and a process of putting in all, you know, your registration information, but you bring your own team. It's limited. This league has grown so much. We're at an average of 110 teams a season. So we go 10 teams, teams. Holy so we go God. every day of the week. Um, there's games from Holy Monday shit. through through Sunday. We have games. Uh, so there's limited spots in this location. We're in the process of opening other locations as well. Nice. Um, but yeah, man, you just bring your team and, um, there's divisions, right. you know, obviously we don't want to pair a, a team up with a couple guys that haven't played basketball in eight years, mm -hmm. maybe played when they were younger in a youth league and, mm -hmm. and, and they do no type of exercise with guys that played uh, professional or are still playing professional because our highest division does have that. So you know, our slogan on our Instagram is from pros to average Joes. There's a division for you. That's kind of what, what we write. So that kind of explains um, our mindset, whether okay. you're a professional athlete playing in the NBA or whether you're a, a dude that hasn't touched the ball in eight years, you could come and get good competition. Nice. Has there been a, like any big upsets in like the pro the pro leagues, like these guys that you think are just like the, just going to run the show and they end up not? Well, really... We, we try our best to group the divisions as good as possible. Yeah. So like in our highest division, which is now called the Hoopers division, mm -hmm. um, it, the, the, the talent is evenly distributed. Okay. Um, but if you can't play, like if you're not in shape, if you don't have size, if yeah. you don't have some type of elite skill or athleticism, you won't be able to play in that division. Like right. it's extremely, extremely competitive. Um, Carlos Arroyo, which mm -hmm. is a, uh, a legend in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. played in the NBA for like 10 years, played at FIU, yep. um, still balling at his age, must 40, early 40s, but he plays in our highest division. And dude, the guy looks like he could still play in the NBA to this day, <laughs> but um, we don't want a dude coming from the park and, and right. just show up and ball gets thrown up and they see they have to guard Carlos Arroyo, right? <laughs> so so we make sure to to distribute the, the talent in an even way. Um, but you see upsets all the time, man. It gets so competitive. The format that we have, it's four on four. Regulation basketball is obviously five on five. Right. Because the court is shorter right. and not as wide, we do four on four, which makes it actually more competitive. Shorter court, you know, like... Exactly. So, uh, man, this gym has a unique atmosphere where... There are upsets because anything could happen in here, really. Yeah. And then what, how's, how's the format of the games? Is it four quarters? So we do two halves, okay. two 20-minute halves. Got you. Um, we go uh, running clock, and then the last two minutes, the clock stops. One thing that we do that's really unique that there's never been an adult basketball league to, to ever do this is that we have challenges similar to the NBA. Okay. So um, each team gets a challenge per game. So if the ref uh, makes a call, it could be a foul, a travel, mm -hmm. and you think it's the wrong call, you call the challenge signal, mm -hmm. we stop the game, we have our two refs come together with one of our uh, managers that handles the videos. Okay. They meet at half court, and through the YouTube stream, right. they could rewind, slow it down, look at the call, and change it. That's if you get the challenge right, <laughs> you get another challenge. That's dope. Little things like that just make the league fun. We yeah. have a shot clock as well that we use the last five minutes okay. of the game, 24-second shot clock. So... It's just those little details that make make the league uh, unique and special. And um, can you and you can foul out all that? No individual foul outs. Okay. Gotcha. Um, like like a regular game, if it's seventeen fouls, right. On the foul, it could be on the floor, mm -hmm. and it's a one and one. Ten ten fouls would be uh, okay. two shots automatically. What we don't want, like, and people will be like, "Dude, this guy has fifteen fouls in a game, right?" <laughs> Which is crazy, but. <laughs> Like you're paying money, you're coming to play in a of league. Of course, well, you're not gonna want, give. You don't uh, want someone to like play ten minutes and then they're right, done. and then yeah. foul out. And trust me, if there was foul outs, half the league would be fouled out. Because <laughs> exactly. We got a lot of dudes here that don't know how to play. Like, never really played organized basketball. Mm -hmm. The rules are different. The reaching and all that shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, and, and our refs, um, 
a good amount of them, like ref high school, some ref college. Okay. So like the rules are a lot different in an organized game than in the streets. Gotcha. So uh, a lot of the guys in the lower division will like foul and they'll be like, how's that a foul? But they don't really know the rules, gotcha. you know? So um, that's, that yeah, and guys pay to play here. Like, look, if you come here and foul 10 times, then they're going to be shooting free throws the whole time regardless. Mm -hmm. But we don't want a guy to come here and maybe the ref, refs do make bad calls. Maybe they make a of couple of bad calls yeah. and now you got to go home early. You've been looking forward to the game all week. Um, yeah. People bring friends, families, kids. and That's like, cool. So, yeah, dude, foul as many times. You, you're going to hurt your team, but you could foul 40 times in a game. <laughs> you're going to play regardless. For so. sure. So then my next question is, uh, how, how have you gotten like the Tyreeks of the world, the Ozunas of the world to, to be able yeah. to come out here? So I mentioned Carlos Arroyo. He's mm -hmm. somebody I'm super appreciative of. Um, He's like the first former pro uh, type celebrity, famous dude that, that's, that's been at uh, a courtside. He's a guy that's been, you know, he has a house here in, mm -hmm. in Miami, um, been playing in these men's leagues for as long as I can remember. Um, so I hit him up through Instagram when we first started and he's like, yeah, I'm going to go check it out. Loves basketball. So he came to play, uh, loved the league, showed love since day one. And then, you know, he's like an art, a reggaeton artist yes. and, and producer now. So... Um, he's linked in with the Nicky Jams and the Asunas uh, okay. and all them. So when he saw we had different divisions, because usually all the men's leagues are like the competitive players play. There's never really been a league where it's like the, the couch potatoes, like the guys that suck <laughs> have a place to play. There's never really been that. So right. he had a group of buddies in the music industry that play on a regular basis. Never really at the time, they've gotten way better, never at the time good enough to like that he could bring them to a five-on-five -five regulation type league, but he's like, hey, you have the lower, they're going to like this core, you know, you have uh, uh, some lower divisions. Mm -hmm. So it started with him bringing, like, guys in, uh, in Nicky Jam's entourage. Uh, David Bosillo used to be an artist, a guy that's tight and in the entourage with Nicky Jam. He started off with bringing Nicky. Nicky loved it. That led to Osuna, um, some other smaller type artists in the reggaeton industry. Right. Um, Anuel, I met recently. Cool. He's uh, in talks of coming. You know, these guys have busy schedules as of well. Course, yeah. uh, playing skills is a super famous artist um, in the reggaeton space that has played. So that's how we got those guys. Tyreek Hill was just straight up, I DM'd him. So <laughs> I saw, this was before, this is when he was still with the Chief. Yeah. Um, okay. But he had come down to Miami. He has a house in Ocala, but he will come to Miami a lot. Okay. So I had seen him playing. For his birthday, he had rented out a gym locally. I think it was South Miami High School, and I saw him playing. So I'm like, yo, if you ever want to play in a league, uh, let's hoop, which is our, our slogan. Uh, and then he hit me up right away. He's like, yo, I'm down. That's crazy. I think like the next day, like, yo, tomorrow at 10. You have, and I'm like, yeah, I'll set up a game for you. Um, so he came through. He brought um, Cole Hardman, which got the, the yeah. game, game winner in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So he brought him. He ended up bringing Waddle um, once he got to the Dolphins. So... Tyree Kills come here like 10 times. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, oh, so okay. he's played. He's actually played on my team in the actual league. But if there's a time where there's, like, I'll set up an exhibition for him with, with refs and everything. Nice. So he brought um, Waddle, but Tyree Kill was always super cool. But, yeah, it was just a DM. Mm -hmm. um, who else came? Jimmy Butler's cousin played in the league. So this was last year. We were up 3-0 on the Celtics. Mm -hmm. They had, like, a two-day break before game four during that break jimmy butler pulled up to watch his cousin play i don't know if you remember but right after that the celtics won three in a row mm -hmm. so it was like a courtside curse so i'm <laughs> i'm praying like two yeah we gotta be, win game be, seven yeah. yeah so so he pulled up with a couple he actually pulled up with c brickley which is a famous um basketball trainer in the okay. new york area so he pulled up with him. He was really cool. He Did just you guys stayed. know that he was going to show up? Yeah. Or, so, okay. so his cousin was playing like at 8 o'clock. It was a regular game. So games start at 6. So I usually pull up like around 4.30, depending on what I got going on. That day I pulled up like around, around 4. I had a couple of things to do in the office. So as I start coming in, I see like three or four dudes like in suits, like around, like in the corner. Like I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And it was only me. So when I pull up, they're like, hey, one of the guys came up to me and he's like, hey, is this area secure? How do you get in? How do you get out? I'm like, yo, I run the league. Like, what's going on? He's like, uh, Jimmy Butler's going to pull up later to watch his cousin. I'm like, okay, awesome. So uh, 
I introduced myself, this and that, showed him how to get up, where he could exit, all, all that type of stuff. So then he, um, he was like, all right, he'll be, I'm going to get your number. So like around like 7 o'clock, 7.30, sent me a text, all right, he's coming through. So I made sure. The number one thing when you have celebrities is you got to make sure that they get um, treated respectfully. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be a place that they could pull up and just chill, right? right? Like we don't want them to be getting harassed exactly. and autographs and mm -hmm. pictures. So we kind of gave him the red carpet to the corner. <laughs> There's not a ton of space, but we kind of gave him his space. Uh, didn't announce it to anyone. He watched the game, uh, left, and, and that was it. Um, yeah. Jorge Masvidal, we had a team called East Havana okay. um, from the Little Havana area. Nice. They were playing in a championship game. This place was packed, like people everywhere. <laughs> and these were like his childhood friends. They told him to pull up. He pulled up, was like standing against that wall. Well, he first pulled up. They played against Better, which is Jake Paul's company, okay. sports betting. So that game was hyped up. So he like pulled up, like talking shit to those guys, like, <laughs> kind of making it fun. Was here, watched the game, and then and then left. So I mean, they all have kind of like their unique uh, mm -hmm. story. I'm trying that's to cool. see who else, but but yeah, man, that's that's kind of the gist of it. And we have more celebrities we're working on to oh, have yeah. have pull up too. So that's dope. That's still, I mean, it's great exposure for the brand, too. Like, shit, people see that these guys are rolling through here. You see a clip on social media, and they're like, damn, I got to go to courtside, like, see what the hell's going on. Because what's, what's really cool about it is, like, a lot of these guys will play, like, in celebrity games, uh -huh. right? We have guys, this is open to the general public. This is not a celebrity league. Right. Anybody could play, you know? Mm -hmm. What's cool is, like, when Osuna plays, they're playing against whoever they're scheduled to play. Like, right. we're not setting up a special game. Osuna's part of a team, so he comes to show up. He's playing against a random team of guys that graduated from Columbus yeah. or whatever, Coral Park, and then they're like, oh, oh shit, shit, I just pulled up to my rec league game, and I'm playing against Osuna. Mm -hmm. It's happened with Tyreek Hill a bunch, too, where they're like, shit, I played against a cheetah. So uh, That's funny. That makes it, that makes it pretty cool. cool. Like, yeah, you yeah, never know. Cool. You come play, and you mm -hmm. might play against a celebrity. Yeah, it happens. Sick. So, yeah, that, that's fun, man. It's, it's definitely cool. Guys enjoy it. So. That's cool. No, I'm sure that's obviously one of the highlights of why you do what you do and, right. and what makes it such it's one a of the perks it, but yeah it definitely helps the brand man we have a big following in puerto rico because of it you know we cool. make sure to get content of these guys when they come play and we post it and and, and stuff like that so that's helped grow our instagram following as well is the goal then to take it because you said about you know looking for other locations are you going to just try to like dominate the south florida region first and then see where it goes from there or are you thinking like you have your Miami spot, maybe go like Orlando. Like, well, how, how does that growth look like? I mean, like any entrepreneur, I think what happens is like, I built Courtside from nothing. Like there was nothing before, there's nothing I inherited. I started my Instagram page with zero followers, started the league with zero players, <laughs> like straight from the bottom. And then like, um, and there's been a lot of help throughout the process and guys that have gotten involved and are mm -hmm. part of my team now. And, right. and, and partners and thing like things like that but on my side like with the creative I kind of like get paranoid about like franchising it and then someone opening in Orlando and then them not running uh, it the right way right. you know yep um but I know as an entrepreneur that's kind of like a fear you got to get over if you want to continue to grow and expand it's, it's valid though because it could it could r r hurt your reputation I, I know people that they've done that like on the restaurant side and I you know, it came, it came with those challenges of, yeah, we opened another location, but now we got to deal with how they're operating and Correct. it's not necessarily how, how I would operate it as the founder of it. So right. it, it is a real challenge when it comes to yeah, that. Yeah, and I think what makes Courtside is kind of like those little details and the mm -hmm. relationships and like there's so many little, can it be franchised? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it can and maybe it gets to that right. at one point. Um, but for right now, like you said, like our main focus is like, let's just dominate uh, the Miami area. Mm -hmm. Really, let's give back to the Miami area because it's been needed. Right. You know, like I have obviously like some like uh, uh, skin in the game, not only like being a part of it, but mm -hmm. also like I care about the yeah. Miami basketball community. So it's been something cool to provide this to people I've known forever and people coming up. Um, who knows where it goes eventually? You know, I think sponsors are going to get involved. Um, Nesquik recently became a sponsor of ours, yes, which has been amazing. Again, to, to start something from the scratch and then, you know, Nesquik giving you a check to just have their logo on the floor, have exactly. be a part of it and, and give us product to give out to people for free. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's been really uh, cool for me. 
Um, and I think more sponsors and bigger sponsors, you know, maybe a, it's a great sponsorable product. I mean, uh, from, you know, obviously you have like the court and things that you could put on the court, but then you have the, the jerseys and stuff right. like that. Then that's something that you can get sponsored. You have then the digital component of it, which then can, you could really get sponsored. And like you said, you're starting a podcast. So like that avenue could yeah. help you monetize the shit out of this because obviously you, you can get monetization through the league and like players and people signing up, but the sponsorable revenue is like, that's endless what you could do with it because the product itself is so good. A hundred percent. You know, we've had um, thoughts of like starting like a, like a series through YouTube, mm -hmm. like episodes of exactly. like following the league, almost mm -hmm. like a reality show type thing where you're following people. Like a lot of these guys in the league through our content become like a uh, kind of famous like celebrities within this It's, it's almost niche. like a reality uh, right. TV show. So like we have guys that play in the league right that mm -hmm. you know are not they're nowhere near celebrities or influencers but right. through the league like now they're known to these other <laughs> thousand people where they're like yo this this guy let's stay and watch him or now they follow him you know what i mean so yeah. we've created that i think there's so much more to expand in that area where like especially in day and age where there's so many you know influencers are a thing like people become famous through just content yeah right um so i think something like that I don't know the details, it's kind of like brewing in my mind, but mm -hmm. something where we make kind of like, you know, a series on YouTube or another platform where like you're following them along. If I we like could it. expand in the digital space more than the actual like physical space, that would be ideal for me. Um, another thing is opening a location where we have three, four courts with under one roof, you know, okay. and we could provide, you know, whether it's a recovery, strength and conditioning, a smoothie bar, like kind of take the experience of like somewhere to come hang out mm -hmm. to the next level where right. it's like if we have a game we could go and and you know get a lift in and then after we could chill and mm -hmm. go to like the little sports bar within exactly. the place and like kind of make it a whole experience with a, a membership there's so many directions that i could take there, it, it, it people is. have pitched me so many mm -hmm. different things i think it's more just hooking up with the right you know investor and the right people yeah, to really true. grow this thing but right now we're just enjoying like the baby steps we're taking mm -hmm. have, have paid off and the league has grown a lot. So as long as you're enjoying it, the process is always fun. Absolutely. I think that's where we're at right now with that's it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. What would you say is the, the biggest challenge that you've faced since you've started this up? Um, like any business, like any business in, in art, whether it's, you know, a restaurant, a uh, school, like when you're dealing with a high volume of people, right? And we've been blessed that there's so many good people and relationships we built in this league, but you know, when you have a thousand people, right, playing in a league, you're going to deal with some uh, stubborn people, right? Some people that are not the easiest uh, to get along with. So, um, you know, basketball is a physical sport. It's a competitive sport. Mm -hmm. You know, every now and then you have altercations on the court. Thank God we've been blessed where it's never exceeded anything. And, and we have a really good staff where, it doesn't ever really get to like the fighting or the violence. Like people respect the space and respect the right. league where it doesn't get there. But obviously you got to manage that on a day-to-day -day basis and keep people, you know, cool. Scheduling with so many teams could be tough as well. You know, you got to get everyone their games and throughout the week. So like, I, I think what happens is a stigma of like, you know, if we started a courtside, an adult league, like that's a brilliant idea. Like we could do it too. Like just, put mm -hmm. people together with the content. They have no idea how much time gets in, goes into this, how much uh, talent you need to be able to run this, like creative entrepreneurial mm -hmm. like type talent. And then uh, how much like work goes into it. Right. Like running courtside is not easy at all. And if I didn't love it, I don't think it would be successful right. because the challenges I enjoy, but it's tough, man. It's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a I, lot. I, I think, uh, it looks a lot more glorious from the outside than when you're on the inside. That's like any business, yeah. you know. Um, I'm sure you know as somebody that is, is an entrepreneur, like yeah. anytime someone sees a successful business, they're like, dude, that dude's balling. Mm -hmm. And they start counting the money and like, yo, he's got this many people at that, this price, but they don't know the expenses. Exactly. They don't know how much money you've put into the business. Mm -hmm. They don't know your overhead. They don't know the time and effort that goes into it. Yep. So I think people look and say, man, if we really – did something but they don't like not anybody could just run this exactly and it's just like not everyone could run the podcast like right. it looks yo he's running a pod like 
it's so yeah it's, they don't know tough. all the ins and outs that goes into it from the financial side you know the time wise uh, the mental component of it like i think about this shit all day all day yeah. i wake up it's the first thing i think of i go to sleep it's the last thing i think of right it's just on my mind all the time but like you said if you just enjoy it and you believe in the product that you're creating uh, nothing's going to really stop you. I mean, I, obviously there's a level of consistency that has to go into it and, and always kind of perfecting your craft, I right. guess. Right. But it's, there's really no end game at the end of it. You choose when that, that end game is it's just because there's always going to be an evolution to it. I think the only way you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur is if you really love it because it gets so hard and challenging that you'll just be like, screw this. I'm going to get a job and something right. that, that's safe. Mm -hmm. But as an entrepreneur, if you love it, like even if I wasn't getting, like if I hit the lotto, I think I'll still be running this because I enjoy it that much. Like it just fills yeah. all my, like I'm so creative that I need, mm -hmm. I, like I, I have to be doing this, I'm you know, you or, or running a business in some type of way. Yeah. Um, but I, I think another thing that's underestimated in entrepreneurship is like the reason you're able to do this podcast so well and conduct interviews is because not only do you put the time, but you have a certain level of talent as well and mm -hmm. god given that's it. That's abilities exactly. you know mm -hmm. i think with entrepreneurship like you look at an athlete and you're like obviously steph curry put in work right mm -hmm. but steph curry was also blessed with the ability to be able to put a basketball in a hoop right yep. so he started off his baseline was probably here and then his skills helped him to get here where other people regular people probably start down here yeah. um the fact that you're able to to do these interviews and do what you do so well is because you've been blessed, I think, with the gift to be able to do it. It's true. And then obviously your hard work and, and, and all that it's, helps yeah. you enhance your ability. But I think people look at entrepreneurs like anybody could do that. Yo, he's got that. Like if he could do it, I can do it. Right. I'm like, the go, do because it. Because anybody you know? could do it. <laughs> exactly. Anybody could start a business. Exactly. You go on SunBiz and you open up an LLC and, and right. anyone could do it. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to succeed in business. You have to have a certain level of talent. Yeah. And then it's like you said, dude, it's like, there's no, like, I left my office at five. It's the boss's problems. I'm just going to focus on whatever I got. When exactly. you're an entrepreneur and have a business, you're like, your brain's flipped on all day. All the time, bro. All the time. All the time. And, so and I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Right. I'm like, I, I, it's like, it comes with a, you know, a level of flexibility. And I, you said it in the beginning is like you as an entrepreneur have always had that in you, right? Because you knew like, Hey, I want, I want that freedom and flexibility to do things my way, right? Whereas you go work a nine to five, you obviously don't have that. You're, you're within the walls of your organization and you do what your job entails you to do. Whereas an entrepreneur, you have that creative liberty to be able to do it your way, the way that you believe is right. Um, whether it's the right way or not, that's a different story, but you have that choice. And I think that's one of the best things about entrepreneurship is Correct. that like you do it your way. And also, I don't think I have a choice whether to be an entrepreneur. I'm a terrible employee. <laughs> like, I'm horrible. Like, any job I have, I'm, like, really, really bad, mm -hmm. right? Because my brain does not allow me to just go and do a right. job and then leave. Like, since I was, like, eight, nine years old, I was thinking of ways to make money. Like, I remember having, like, an entrepreneur book when I was, like, eight or nine, and it just like, it's just the way I was built, right? Yeah. So um, to me, it's like the only way. And I think when people get into business, they kind of have like a plan B. Like if it doesn't work out, I could always, you know, I have my degree so I could go right. get a job over here. Or, oh, I could go work for my mom or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. To me, when I start a business, I make sure that I have no backup plan. Because if I don't have a backup plan, I know it's going to succeed because yeah. I have no choice. You don't have an option. Especially yeah. now. I have a wife and two kids, right? So Shit changes. it has to work, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think too many people have a plan B, something to fall back on. So in the times of adversity, they could just revert to that. Um, if you really believe in something and are passionate about a business, I wouldn't have any backup plan. And I would make sure you just go all in. That's true. There's a podcast that I that I listen to and they're like, don't ever have a plan B because if you give yourself that option, you're going to have that in the back of your head saying, Hey, you know what? If this doesn't work, at least I know I have that, but you're not going to give it your all knowing that you have something on the back end in the case that it doesn't work. Like you said, if I say, Hey, this is it. And if I don't 
If like it just this doesn't work, I have nothing. So I have to make this work. And I think that's the difference. It's like a, it's a mental switch that you you turn on, right? Because you're like, this shit doesn't work out. Like I'm I'm screwed. And you have your back against the wall 24 seven. So you don't have an option, but to figure it out and you're not going to have to do it by yourself. Like, you know, you have people around you that are going to help you. And, you know, I think you have, uh, like you said, you've built a good team of people around you. And I think that's where the magic happens, right? It's that level of adversity that comes with like not having that option, supplementing it with like a good amount of people around you to help you kind of execute it. I think that's where basketball has helped me. You know, you could be a phenomenal basketball player. You could be LeBron James. You could be Michael Jordan. If you don't have the right role players, if you don't have a rebounder, a defender, mm-hmm. this true. guy could space yeah. the floor and shoot. Um, this guy here comes off the bench and he has his role. Like, I think the team concept is is yeah. amazing. Like, athletes that get into entrepreneurship mm-hmm. because although I'm the head guy and right. everything falls on me, I know how to delegate and be like, I'm not very good in that area. It's so huge. I'm going to hire. So it's almost mm-hmm. like a, like a, the game of basketball. Like, yeah. I know I'm a really good shooter, but I need a big man, That's right, true. to give the ball to. Because when they double him, he could pass it back out to me and I could shoot it. Like, that type of uh, training throughout my whole life mm-hmm. put me in a position now where I don't, I just handle in courtside what I'm good at and everything else is delegated. And I've had to invest a lot of money to get other people involved. But right. it's the only way the business it's, You got to do it, it if you're going to want to grow. But, um, but yeah, I try to not give myself any plan B. Like, for instance, I played four years of college basketball. I played at Palm Beach Atlantic, a Division II in West Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. I was eligible all four years. I do not have my college degree. <laughs> when basketball season ended my senior year, I stopped going to class, right? I'm like a semester away from graduating college, and I won't do it. The reason I won't do it's it... Like my brother. Yeah. My brother is the same shit. But it's like... Without knowing, like a couple years ago, I really thought about it because everybody around me is like, just finish your degree. Like you put so much time, you have so many credits, like just finish it. Right. Subconsciously, like it took me time to like meditate on the fact of like, why don't I just go back and finish? And I think the reason why is because I knew that if I finished and business got tough with that degree, I could go get a job anywhere. I could go work at a school and be a PE teacher. I could go work anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So I was like, I'm not going to get that degree. It forces me to really go all in in, in, in business, awesome. and it's, uh, that's helped me. So I have zero that's crazy. aspiration or motivation to finish that's cool. college. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's, it's how you've wired the brain to work, right. you know? So you're telling yourself, if I do that, that might be my escape. I don't want anything want it. to fall you don't back want any, Yeah, I don't want anything. That's like, zero excuse to be able to be like, all right, let me go do this. Yeah. Um, Cause you got to go all in, man. It's tough to make it in business. If you're not all in, you won't, you won't make it. I think so. they say like the average is like after four years, businesses are, you know, they shut them down because like the people just, they, whether they just don't, they run out of the capital or, a, you know, they just burnt, burnt, burnt out and they just don't uh, want to do it anymore. But I think the average like life expectancy of like yeah. a startup is, is four years. So, you know, that, if you just think about that, if you're able to even get past that point, you're like, holy shit, okay, I'm, I'm doing something, right? Like something's working. Yeah. And which you kind of need to remind yourself about that, right? Because like down that journey, you have, you, you're like, fuck, like, am I doing this right? Like, is it, you know, you're, you're weighing every option, you're thinking of every situation for the business and you're like, you know what? I have to give myself more credit along the way. Be like, shit, like I, I've lasted longer than probably like 90% of other yeah. entrepreneurs. And I'm creating a product that people actually care about. Like that's that says something. I have to do that all the time. I'm always thinking about where Cortez is gonna be, mm-hmm, right. right? And and like the future of where. I, and sometimes I gotta just like mm-hmm. be in the moment and, yeah. and be like, dude, you work so hard, and and we're wishing so bad to be where you're at right now. It's true. Where sometimes, and it's tough as an entrepreneur because you're always wired to make more. And, mm-hmm. Sometimes you just got to sit in the moment and be appreciative of how far yeah. it, it, it's come. Luckily, I have people around me that remind me, like, how, how big it's gotten and, and how much we've improved. Right. But, um, but yeah, that, that's, like, a daily thing because we're just wired to, like, want to achieve more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just got to chill and enjoy what you've been able to build. Sure. So I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. So before we wrap it up, I want to just get into a little bit about, like, what your thoughts are on Miami and South Florida basketball. It feels like over the last five years, it's it's really blossomed. I mean, obviously, high school has gotten big down here with a you know, uh, you know no bias, but Columbus, 
but you have other big schools in, in the state of Florida that, that are pulling a ton of talent. What's your just thought of the landscape of, of South Florida basketball right now? I mean, so I could speak on this. I'm the head coach at True North. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm the head basketball oh, nice. coach. I started the program there five years ago. Okay. So that's kind of what I, what I do on the side, my way of really oh, wow. being in the game okay. even more and giving back to these kids and something mm -hmm. I'm passionate about as well. Um, I think that Miami basketball is at a place right now that it's really never been before, and I mm -hmm. say that in a positive way. I think, I think it really started, you know, with the big three when LeBron chose to come to to the Heat. Uh, you know, a lot of the kids during that time when LeBron came over, I forget what year it was specifically. I want to say it was like 2011, 2010. Yeah. 2010. Yeah. So around that time, you got to think, these kids were probably in elementary, the kids that are now in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a player like LeBron James and the buzz it brought in the city and all over the world, right, you're going to have kids that are, you know, uh, in the process of choosing a sport that are just going to be so much more interested in wanting to play basketball because of LeBron and Wade and Bosh and the Heat are winning. So I think in that time, it kind of sparked the city and, and it's just been on an upward uh, trend since then. Um, South Florida, Miami specifically, right. has dominated uh, the state tournament in, in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, uh, you know, Belen won a state championship did, last yeah. year. Uh, Riviera Prep has won back-to-back -back state true. championships. Mm -hmm. Matter Lakes won it last year. Columbus has been dominant with three state championships uh, in a row. The amount of Division One basketball players getting full rides from the Miami area which is known as a football, right. uh, you know, a place, f football city, and then baseball with our Hispanic background. Mm -hmm. But basketball is, is uh, I think, slept on throughout the whole country. But if you really look at it now, like the amount of success that, that Miami's had in basketball, you know, even the University of Miami, we went two years in a row, we yep. went to the Elite Eight, and then, FAU and then made went it to the Final Four. FAU's another one. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's so many good coaches down here. There's so many parks where people play. Like it's gotten, a, you know, years ago, like five, six years ago, uh, um, I made a video about how parks are kind of dead and, and people aren't going to play anymore. But now like parks have picked up. And, and I really think that this could be considered a, a basketball town now because of the amount of success, man, even from, from like the, the youth, like the small youth, they're having a lot of success in, in the travel ball circuit as compared to like, you know, around the country and, and, and states and cities that are known for basketball, yeah. like a New York and, and like a DC or a Texas, like we're able to compete with those guys now. So uh, it's a blessing to me of because course. I'm running my business mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm coaching, but it's a really good time for Miami basketball. Yeah, I think social media also plays a big part in it because like these kids see it, you know, they're like on TikTok, Instagram and things right. like that. And they're like, oh, this is cool, right? Like being in a league and they, they do the travel ball and all that stuff. And they kind of be like, I want to be that, you know? So I, I think that's that's really evolved, I guess, basketball. Because basketball was really an afterthought. Like you said, after football and baseball, yeah. it was just, then it was basketball. And right. now I feel like it's it's right up there in the mix with, with the other two. If anything, I think it's definitely surpassed baseball. Baseball feels like yeah. a little bit of a dying breed, unfortunately. Um, it's not like as cool. It's not as entertaining, not yeah. as cool. Um, I don't think they help themselves. I no. don't think the rules change too much. I yeah. don't think in social media they don't have as much of a presence. But basketball is just a sport that mm -hmm. people love, man. It's cool. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, and it always helps when the Heat are good, which even when LeBron yeah. left, went to the we, finals, yeah, like the Heat continue. Run. Yeah, the Heat. I'm a Heat fan, um, mm -hmm. but the Heat helps all types of businesses. And you'll be surprised how much like our professional team in the Miami Heat will influence the youth and that buzz that the Heat will bring, how much it helps, and just the, the overall interest from everybody in the city on basketball yeah. is good for businesses like mine. So I'm always hoping the Heat uh, Selfish, could, yeah, could, yeah, yeah. Could, could, could win, and let's see what they do now in, in the offseason. I know. I, know, I know it's been a topic of conversation this offseason that they're not making moves and that Riley likes his team and he thinks it's been more of an injury thing than a talent yeah. thing, which I don't necessarily disagree with it. That's why I tell a lot of people, I'm like, I don't think – people realize what the Heat have accomplished over the last eight years, you know? Two two finals appearances and injuries were a big reason why we probably didn't win those uh, championships. And you're talking about a completely different situation if you win those two, right? And everyone's like, well, yeah, maybe we do have the team. So I think everyone's just kind of like frustrated, obviously, but 
we also haven't gotten the breaks maybe that ultimately maybe would have gotten us a couple of championships. I think Miami's year. a city where everybody wants results fast, yeah, right? 100%. This is such a fast gratification. moving city. And mm -hmm. it's like, you made it to the championship last year. This year, although we were missing key players and mm -hmm. we got eliminated to the eventual champs, it's like dismantle the whole team right away, which I don't think is the answer. I think, yeah. um, first of all, we need to trust Riley and Spolstra yeah. because they know way more than any of us, mm -hmm. myself included, exactly. and they've proven to be, <laughs> yeah. look at the what they've built, the heat culture, right? Mm -hmm. So I think Miami fans, number one, need to be a patient, yeah. right? And trust the organization. But I think you're absolutely right. I think with our full team healthy, I think we have a very um, competitive team, but everybody loves the big names. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, but they have this and, and we don't have those Exactly, they want the superstar names. name. The only guy I want personally is Anthony Edwards. And if that means, uh, tanking and playing with a middle school team for the next three, four years, whenever he's a free agent, I would yeah. do that because that dude's a beast. He I think is a he, beast. That's like Wade 2.0 mm -hmm. coming to Miami. So yeah. that's selfishly what I would want, uh, would Anthony sick. Edwards. But yeah, I think if we're fully healthy, you know, with Jimmy, we Hero, Bam. And, and you develop these guys in Triple J and, and Jovic and now the rookie that we just got. Uh, I, I, I think the roster's I, there. Man, listen, I love the Heat. I support the Heat. And whoever's on that court, Mm -hmm. It could be me, you, uh, us four, just us four yeah. against five NBA players. And with Spo and Riley and that culture, find a way to... we're going to find a way to be in the game, right? <laughs> so that, that's what Trust I love about smoke. the Heat. It's, it's tough nowadays from the high school, college level and on with mm -hmm. so many transfers and so many, like free agency, it's so common to leave. It's hard to really build like a culture and we yeah. always find the right guys. Um, so, so I'm a proud Heat fan. Me too. Uh, win or lose or whatever. Pat or Spo decides to do, I'll be at Heat Games and I'll be supporting them and they're going to win. Absolutely. Regardless, nah, so. it's, a, it's a proven product for sure. Well, we appreciate it, brother. It was a, it was a good time. I really yeah. enjoyed the conversation. Honestly, I could talk for another hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but I appreciate it and the space is awesome. I've definitely got to, I want to come to a couple of games. got to get you out here yeah, and yeah, play. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm down as fuck. For sure. I haven't looked in a while, but I'm down. Stay tranquilo. I get, I get, I get still, I get, I'm, <laughs> I'm a good shooter. I, I get you the three ball well. That's all, hey, that's all you need to Sit, do. Space Nowadays out the floor. It's a, it's a three point conference. Exactly. Right? <laughs> cool, all right, man. Appreciate Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.